Hello everyone and welcome to the Beard of Geeks, the weekly grab bag of topics covering movies, comics, video games and TV. My name is Jags, I am the Beard Master with me today. This is the marvellous Patrick Brown. Who else would it be? Hey, it's only me, mate. Don't get too excited. You're just like, <laughs> wait for my turn to talk. Hey. hey I don't know what else <laughs> to do. Just jump in, mate. Jump in. <laughs> Patrick Brown, we're going to talk about Dragon Ball Super Broly because we said we would yeah. on last week's show. Yeah, I'm excited. They didn't glass this movie. No. <laughs> they didn't glass it. No, it actually went beyond my expectations. Beyond? Yeah. They I should, knew it would be good. should have called it Dragon Ball Beyond. And beyond. Oh, I like it. That's pretty good. <laughs> That'll be the next series. <laughs> yeah. Everyone knows. We're just going to get straight into it. Yeah. Full spoilers, but we'll try to dodge the spoilers like we normally do getting toward the end. So we'll keep the generalities and... Ah, oh, fuck uh, it. We'll yeah. just spoil it. We're uh, going to spoil it. <laughs> we always do that. Ah, nah, fuck it. Ah, fuck it. <laughs> it's it's too hard to talk about where you're like, <laughs> oh, yeah, what about at the beginning where that guy... And then you're and, like, oh, I can't talk about that. Can and I? then... The, the, you know that bit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Dragon Ball Super Broly is the first Dragon Ball movie uh, under the Super Banner, which is the new newest Dragon Ball series after Dragon Ball Z. Uh, which is canon, so it's in the official uh, Dragon Ball timeline. So you know, it goes Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, and now Dragon Ball Super. We like GT is forgotten; it's non-canon, and that now. And so this movie is set uh, after the current Super Run we've had. So it's set after the Tournament of Power, which went for like forty episodes. <laughs> Just for you know, full clarification. I have not watched Dragon Ball Super. I've watched mm. the first two episodes, but I've seen lots of clips on YouTube and I've no heaps about it and I'm going to watch it very soon. I'm just waiting for all yeah. the uh, all the Blu-rays to come out. Um, Me too. Because I haven't watched it either. I'm a, everybody has the subs versus dubs argument, but you know, when it comes to Dragon Ball, I'm a dub guy because I like hearing Sean Schemmel as Goku. I like hearing Christopher Sabat as... Yeah, Piccolo and Vegeta. I like all their voices. I like Sean Chen were doing Kamehameha's in my face, and I'm just like, "Fuck, listen to that surround sound." So you rather That's and you rather sick. read all the captions and? No, I'd rather listen to the English dub. Oh, you mean the English? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, you're me not very too. versed with anime. That's all right. I'll I'll let that one pass sorry, on I didn't, you. <laughs> I didn't realize what you meant. Yeah, I know. Me too. Yeah. You all haven't right. watched Dragon Ball Super neither, have you? Neither. No, no, neither. Just Dragon Ball Z and um, yep. and early Dragon Ball, bit of that too, but. Not consistent with the first Dragon Ball. Mm. Just a lot of Dragon Ball Z. So you're pretty much coming up. into this movie, you know, knowing mm. who some of these characters and that are because they the appeared in the well. first two uh, films we had before Super So, yeah. uh, Battle of Gods and Resurrection F. So I'm talking about like Beerus and Whis yeah. and, you know, all I'm these other characters. I love them stuff. too. I love them. Mm. So uh, this movie is set after the Tournament of Power, like I said. Yep. Um, what is it? It's like a hundred and three minutes, hundred and four minutes. So it's full feature length. It's not like one of the old Dragon Ball Z movies where it's like sixty something minutes. I wouldn't really call that a film. It's more like mm. an extended TV special or something like that. Yeah. But um, I'm just gonna go full balls into the story. We start off. We flash back to Planet Vegeta when Vegeta was a baby, and we go back to. Planet Vegeta, King Cole, Frieza's father, he's come to Planet Vegeta, and he says he's going to retire, and his son Frieza is going to take charge, be in charge of the Saiyans and what they're doing that now, because uh, Frieza and his father and that have essentially moved in, and they've kind of, you know, because they're the big guns in the universe or whatever, they've hamstrung bloody the, the Saiyans into working for them, because the Saiyans, you know, take over planets and sell them, and, and that's where their, you know, that's where their dosh comes from, that's where they make all their money, but now they essentially do it for Frieza, you know, they're under his thumb, and they, you know, they're not strong enough to, to fight back, so they're kind of, essentially in a way, kind of a slave army, you know, mm. you know, they don't like it, but... yeah. But anyway, it kind of delves into into that aspect. It begins because Frieza plays a pretty prominent part in this story. But anyway, it uh, obviously the movie is called Dragon Ball Super Broly, and it uh, introduces Broly, who was in three previous Dragon Ball Z films: Broly, the Legendary Super Saiyan, Broly Second Coming, and Bio Broly. All of which weren't canon. They have kind of existed outside of the dra main Dragon Ball Z timeline. But Broly was always a very popular character. 
But now he's officially been integrated into Dragon Ball canon. So now he's in the official timeline. So anyway, the story is, the gist of it is, King Vegeta is overseeing his son Vegeta in the uh, kind of the nursery area that's for special Saiyan children, you know, that have uh, elevated battle powers. You know, their, their untapped potential is quite high. You know, they can measure, you know, how strong they are. And their uh, potential is there, like their fighting potential. So they go in this special nursery. And uh, Broly is in there, you know, as a baby. His power is off the scale or whatever. Long story short, King Vegeta decides to banish Broly. Out of pure uh, jealousy. Out of jealousy, yeah. And because he's afraid that, you know, his power is so uh, overwhelming in that he may get to the stage where he can't control it. And he may end up, you know, destroying the planet or injuring a lot of people on that and mm. also because you know his his son his pride and joy is uh this the strongest fighter the strongest baby that they've ever had through he's he's blown off all the scales um all these powers blown over the scales all their uh measurements and that that they had he's he's more powerful than all that so broly's banished uh his father goes after him and the beginning of the film is kind of like extended it kind of sets up the story of Broly and Paragus, it kind of retells the origin of Planet Vegeta, Bardock, uh, Goku's father, and Raditz's father as well, and Goku's mother. I think this is the first appearance ever of Goku's mother. You know, we kind of really get a glimpse of, like, the Saiyans, because previously, you know, they're kind of just like what we've seen of them. They're just kind of like a warrior race, you know, they're kind of all shit assholes and that. But we kind of see on this planet, you know, Bardock and that comes back and everyone's like, hey, Bardock, good to see you and all this. You kind of get a little glimpse of that day to day of the Saiyans and that. And, you know, they are a warrior race and stuff and they do, you know, take over planets and sell them. But, mm. you know, you kind of see a little of that interaction and that. And they're kind of not all bad, not they're really. Just people, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. yeah they're, just, they're just people in that. Anyway, it kind of retells, you know, the origin of Planet Vegeta being destroyed. Goku's origin is kind of retold. You know, Goku wasn't, you know, sent off to Earth, you know, to take it over one day. He kind of gets, like, the Superman origin in this, Mm. where Bardock suspects that Freezer is going to destroy Planet Vegeta because he's been asking around about the myth of the legendary Super Saiyan, and Bardock puts two and two together, and he thinks that Freezer's afraid of the Super Saiyan, you know, coming, you know, a Super Saiyan coming into being and uh, challenging him one day and defeating him and whatever. So he plans to destroy a Planet Vegeta like he does in the original Dragon Ball Z timeline. Bardock decides to send Goku away to Earth so he'll be safe. And, you know, if he's wrong, he says he'll go and collect him and bring him back. But then the planet blows up and Vegeta's off the planet and Goku's gone. And it kind of retells that story of all these different elements and it kind of ties it all in together this is really Mm. the first half of the film i think we're kind of talking about here kind of because the first 45 minutes is really kind of story and setup you know it's probably the first 25 minutes Mm. that's kind of the retelling of kind of the origin up until planet vegeta's destroyed and then kind of the next 20 25 minutes is kind of modern day goku and vegeta yeah freezes calm and then you know broly and his father are found and then leads into, like, all the big fight stuff you've seen mm. in the trailers and that. What did you think of the movie, Patrick Brown? Like, wh- yeah. what did you think of, like, that first setup, like, that first kind of 40? Yeah, I really liked it. I thought it was well done and well told as well and quite interesting. So, like, it really it just made you kind of understand a lot more and it, it wasn't just, you know, a movie straight into the action all about that it was really mm. spread out and paced well and it made you really kind of yeah have a bit more of a bit more of a sense of you know the story and, and a deep kind of feeling for it as well so it actually meant something by the time the end came and it was a bit more so and also like a, a bigger emotional connection to yeah. like a lot of these characters we've seen before like bardock and yeah exactly and yeah. um king vegeta like even though he's kind of a dick mm. like he he wants what's best for his planet and, you know, he doesn't, you know, he yeah. doesn't like being under the rule of King Cold and then yeah. Freezer and that as well. And, you know, they kind of all dream of the day where, you know, they could take back their lives and mm. take back their planet. And- yeah, exactly. I really liked seeing Broly's story as well. Just, um, mm. I'm actually new to that character. I, d- I hadn't seen him before this. So, I really love how raw he was. That's what I would probably call it. Just because he pretty much was 
stuck on that planet for his most of his life. Mm. Um, that strange, like, uh, abandoned planet that was just nothing but, like, parasites and bloody vermin on there that had to fight <laughs> off. Vermin. <laughs> and that big, uh, big beast that he had to, uh, you know, that kept giving him a hard time, but he turned it into his friend and, you know, bah. he, he kind of trained with it. Yeah. And, it, mm. and that was, you know, really cool. And it really, it really made him who he is. So it's, he's not just this big, dumb kind of guy that is just rage all the just time. Just kind of this one note like villain. He, like he, he has that, but now it explains why. You know, it's got more depth and more feeling mm. to it now because so when he does rage out and unleash, he, he really does feel like he's a, an animal like a, a, out of its cage and he's just, you, he's uncontrollable and mm. and it's, uh, and you know why as well. So it's like really, yeah, I, I thought that was done really well. Because mm, cause Broly is banished to this planet. I've, the name of it escapes me. Um, I've seen the movie twice. I went and saw it twice, um, but I forget. And uh, Paragus goes after him, but the the ship is damaged while they're there and they can't escape the planet or the planetoid, mm. and they're stuck there. And Paragus uh, vows to... He's going to train Broly, and one day he would have his revenge on King Vegeta and the whole bloodline. And mm. then we kind of... We jump back and forth between them and Planet Vegeta, and I, I actually really liked Bardock in this. I, I feel like, though, we didn't see... I would have liked, even if it was just another five or ten minutes on Planet Vegeta with the Saiyans, like, just another five or ten minutes of story, just mm. to flesh that out a little bit more. It didn't even have to be ten minutes. could have been five, six, seven minutes, you know, because yeah. the last hour of the movie is essentially all fighting. Yeah. And it is fantastic, but even if you just took like five minutes out of that, the you know, that hour of nearly of fighting and just mm. kind of moved it back to the front and just another five minutes just to flesh out that story a little bit more. Because yeah. that was definitely one of the most interesting parts. Um, I definitely felt Broly was, you know, the most emotionally investing like the one i could emotionally invest in the most yeah. in the movie because his story is kind of so tragic yeah you know he's born he's got this incredible power and the king of his planet is essentially afraid and jealous you mm. know that he might surpass his son you know who's yeah proven or is seen to be the greatest that there ever was yeah and he doesn't want anything to challenge him and you know kind of his bloodline and that as well i and guess so out of fear and you know mm. the possible threat one day he banishes him and his dad's so hard on him. So that's like another, you know, he's just, his dad is really hard on him. Mm, just Paragus. Him. Yeah. yeah. Because he's just got that, you know, he's just got that thirst for vengeance and yeah. he knows that he can't do it himself. So he trains Broly using him pretty much as a weapon yeah. or as a catalyst to get his revenge or what he believes to be their revenge. But Broly mm. was a baby in that at the time and he could have lived a happy life or whatever, you yeah. know, on that planet. But, you know, it was really Paragus who was, you know, kind of the catalyst of, you know, starting and pushing Broly down that path, you know, essentially just making him, you know, a weapon for vengeance. Mm. So, Planet Vegeta's destroyed, everyone's killed, Bardock still gets killed the same way, you know, uh, up in space and he's trying to, you know, blast Freezer's big energy ball and Planet Vegeta's destroyed. And then we kind of jump to modern day and Freezer is collecting the Dragon Balls on Earth. They steal six of the Dragon Balls that have already been collected from Bulma's lab. So Goku, Vegeta, uh, Bulma, and Whis go looking for the last Dragon Ball because, you know, Vegeta... It gives Vegeta kind of, like, a good reason, like, for his training and stuff. Like, they kind of worked it a better way because... You know, it was Goku and Vegeta. It was always kind of their rivalry. Goku just wanted to be the strongest. He wanted to fight the best. He wanted to push himself. Vegeta just wanted to be better than Goku. But now they've kind of changed his motivation because they are friends in that now. But his kind of motivation to still train and to get stronger is because Freezer's back. And he knows that one day Freezer's going to come back to Earth to exact mm. his revenge on Goku, Vegeta, and... He's like, what if, you know, we don't train and Frieza gets stronger than us? You know, he's already achieved his golden form. You know, what's to say he won't get stronger and come back? He said, that's why we, you know, that's why I have to train. I still have to be strong. So anyway, Frieza's collecting the Dragon Balls and he's got some of his members of the Frieza Force out looking for new recruits. 
because, you know, the freezer force is, you know, not quite what it was, you know, the army. So they're sending out soldiers and stuff to, to the furthest reaches of space to find new recruits and new soldiers and that. So two of these uh, folks eventually come across uh, Broly and Paragus and bring them back to the freezer force. And uh, Freezer sees Broly's potential and pretty much enlists him. And they're like, hey, let's go to Earth and you can fight, you know, Goku and Vegeta. Vegeta's there. You know, you can get your revenge. Mm. And Paragus just sees Red immediately. He's like, let's go kill that fucking bastard after he's, what his father did to us. That's bullshit. Let's get him, Broly. So they go to Earth. Freezer says to them, like, leave Goku for me. Goku's mine. You know what? His blood on my hands, essentially. The wish isn't important. Freezer wants to be five centimeters taller because everyone thinks he's short. Everyone yeah. calls him short. So that's the whole reason he's trying to get the Dragon Balls. So they get to Earth and Paragus essentially unleashes Broly onto uh, Vegeta and Goku. Vegeta fights Broly first. Yeah. And like the second up, well, it's like the first 45 to 46, 48 minutes is kind of all story and stuff. And the second half of the film, like the last... 50 minutes it's just you know mm. the big fight scene you know the extended fight scenes and that you know still I, plenty of story in that in there but i love a good fight too like a long fight as mm. well. and it, this is one of those movies where i've you know the and the fight went on for yeah like 40 minutes 50 minutes something like and that. the animation so, too like awesome the I, I noticed the animation at the beginning of the movie like it was pretty pretty simple like it looked good but it was pretty mm. simplified you know and I was like, eh, I kind of just noticed it once when I was watching it. I was yeah. like, eh, the animation's a bit simple. Put it out of my head. Was invested in the story. Once we got to the fight scene, as soon as Broly, like, Aah! and he charges Vegeta, we go into, like, 10 out of 10 style animation. Like, yeah. they saved all the money for, like, they put all the best work into the fight scenes. Mm. And it looks the best. Like, this is the best looking... Dragon Ball anything I've ever seen in, like, the second half of this movie. It does vary, like, when it cuts out of the fight scenes and there's a little Mm. bit of story or whatever, you know, or it cuts back to Frieza and Paragus talking. But during the fight scenes, it's never looked better, especially during the Vegeta Broly fight. Like, it looks fucking phenomenal. There's never too much. Like, it it is a lot to to watch, to take in. Mm. But it's not, like, where you can't see what's going on. It's, It's very... They've got this good way of keeping track of both of them, and they've both got different colours, their own unique kind of colours, yeah, and they're lighting definitely. up. So it's like, and it's it's quite easy to kind of keep track and, and mm. enjoy the fight without being like, oh, I don't know what the hell's happening. Like, who's, where are they? What, what's going on? But yeah, it's great. They do it a really does good get job. a little bit hectic, like here and there in some scenes, yeah. but that's due to kind of the um, the epicness. Yeah, the epicness <laughs> and kind of the 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 what's happening in the story around the fight scene. And you know, amp it up too. Broly gradually like gets stronger and that. Um, and as he learns fight, as he fights, doesn't he? He, he, he does evolves too. As he fights, he has. He's pretty much like nothing when he starts. He doesn't even know that he's he can upgrade him, like you know, change into his next form or anything mm. like that. And he just learns from fighting. And they say that when he's fighting, mm, Vegeta yeah. makes that you know, thought in his head. You know, he's learning as he fights. Yeah, and there are some good displays of that. I'll, I'll get back to that because I'm jumping forward a bit. Yep, but. Broly is essentially like he he's pretty he's like because Chilai and Lemo they're the two that found him they are this girl and guy um they're the ones that found him in Paragus and they kind of have a bit of a soft spot for Broly yeah and they do have Broly does have like a lot of dialogue scenes and you kind of you you find out that he he's very soft spoken you know he does have manners and stuff you know Paragus tells him to like use his manners and he's like you know thank you very much you know. Uh, for whatever you know the food and that, that they give him and then you find out that you know he he smells this water and he drinks it because he's never had water in his life ever they've been on this planet without water mm. and just like the the simple moment of him drinking water for like the first time and yeah. he just like chugs it down you're like wow that's like a it's such a simple idea but yeah. you know, it's the way they portrayed it, and that the movie is very impactful because and it adds you know, to it a lot. It makes yeah. you realise that shit. His whole life, he's just been kind of suffering without water. Mm. He's had this dirty, uh, like syrup stuff, whatever it was. That yeah, they've been like these giant insect bugs. They've been breaking their legs and just yeah. eating all the juice and that like out of their legs. It's, mm. it's fucked. But yeah, you kind of get the understanding that Broly's just this very kind of 
soft natured guy who's actually struggling with this power and that he doesn't kind of understand and his father's kind of been pushing him toward you know uh the training for his revenge mm. and he's got like this collar on there's this great scene where they're in like the cafeteria and one of these drunk soldiers comes over and he's like oh hey come and uh eat with me don't hang out with these losers and then and broly kind of loses it and he goes to attack this guy mm. uh, but paragus uh paragus has got like this electric like collar on him to control him so when he like you know, uh, loses it in that, he can pull out this remote and, you know, mm. zap him and it kind of gets him back in line. Anyway, Chile ends up stealing this remote off him and smashes it and you're like, well, shit, that's not yeah. a good idea. That's going to come back later. Mm. And uh, later, yeah, during the fight scene, you kind of get a sense of Broly because he has, like, all this untapped power and that. And you watch him fight Vegeta to begin with. It's like Vegeta fights him in his base form. And then he's like, he's going toe to toe with him, and then he gets annoyed, and he transforms into a Super Saiyan, and he's fighting him as a Super Saiyan, and he's kind of doing all right, but Broly's getting angrier, and it's becoming a bit more of a chore. Then Vegeta transforms into a Super Saiyan God uh, with the red hair, and Broly, even in his base form, is still going toe to toe with Vegeta as a Super Saiyan God. Yeah, that's co- like when I was watching that, I'm like, this that's is fucking epic. like insane. Like he is in his base form like we're going mm. we're going deep dragon ball here talking about transformations and shit but like he's in his base form and like vegeta's having a hard time fighting him mm. you know as a uh, super saiyan and that he does get the upper hand on him a bit yeah um but then broly starts to lose it even more and he kind of gets like attacked by vegeta and whatever and he he kind of goes a bit mad and he kind of has this kind of semi transformation and Paragus describes it as because his tail had been removed. Um, he's like uh, he's he's able to he's been able to transform and tap into the power and the strength that Saiyans have when they transform into a great ape. But because he doesn't have his tail, um, he has that power and strength, but he still has his you know speed and maneuverability. So it's yeah. becoming more formidable. And isn't that why he's not so switched on as well? He's kind yeah of- because he. Because when uh, Saiyans transform, they look at the full moon and they transform into great apes. They kind of, they they there's good. It's not really a throwaway line, but it, the beginning of the movie when they're on the planetoid, they're with another guy there. Beats, I think his name is, and he was staring at the full moon. And Paragus says to him, he's like, "Don't stare at the moon too long, or you'll transform into a great ape." And he's like, "Oh shit!" He's like, "I forgot. I've I've never transformed into a great ape before." And he's like. He's like, you, well, you should never do it. He's like, that's a good thing. He said, the because you'll lose all sense of yourself and you'll just become uncontrollable. He said, the only time uh, you should transform into a great ape is if it's your absolute last resort, if you're backed into a corner and yeah. there's no way out and you transform into a great ape and then, you know, yep. if you're in a fight or whatever. And that's how they kind of explain that later on because... Uh, when they were on the planetoid, Broly transformed into a great ape and he became a danger to himself and Paragus, so Paragus removed his tail. Mm. But he's still able to tap into that power and even while he's still in kind of his human form. And yeah. uh, and then he becomes more of a kind of a task for Vegeta and then Goku when Goku steps in. But mm. before we go into the fight too much more, like I just want to talk about uh, Broly as the character a bit more because in kind of the original movies and that he kind of has like this big kind of uh burgundy kind of like sash thing it kind of looks like you know big roby thing around his rat and oh, around yeah. his waist but they've kind of changed that in this he kind of has like this fur like this green pelt the green one and um chile says to him like oh look at this filthy pelt you want to take that off and he's like no mm. he's like he, do- he doesn't want to take it off and the reason he doesn't want to take it off is because it was actually the ear of one of the creatures that was on the planetoid. Ooh, big beast. Yeah, like this gigantic, like, snake beast thing. It's and like fairy, yeah, real soft and fairy. Yeah, and he's like, you know, to begin with, he was real mad and all this stuff, and he's trying to eat me and stuff, and that's, he's like, he kind of turned that into training, like, avoiding his attacks and stuff. Yeah. And then he's like, eventually, we became friends, and the show's, like, Broly is a kid, like, sitting on him and stuff, and they're kind of friends. And then Paragus comes along and he's like, you know, you shouldn't be friends with this thing. He said, this isn't training. This is more like, you know, um, playing with a pet. And so he shoots Bar and like blows his ear off. Mm. And um, Broly says like he was never the same after that. Like he, 
you know, he just went back to being a wild beast, if not worse. And he's like, so he kept his ear and, and so he could always remember, yeah. you know, his friend, essentially. And you're like, that's really, like, fucking touching. Ooh, like, that's a really great yeah, like, story. Good, For it? a character that never had any deep, like, characteristics, because in the movies, yeah. in the first few movies he's in, he's... He doesn't really talk. He's kind of like this skinny but still muscular guy, and then he transforms into big ass Broly. And he hates Goku because when they were babies, they were in pods next to each other, and Goku just kept crying, and it made him angry when he was a baby. And when he hears like uh, Goku's name, Kakarot or whatever, it just makes him mad, and he wants to kill Goku. <laughs> That's the reason why he wants to kill him in those movies <laughs> because when he they were babies, he kept crying, and it fucking made him angry and shit. Yeah. So and he's that. just like, oh, he's having like repressed memories and shit, and he's like, oh. Uh, fucking Goku, fuck you, I hate you, I'm going to kill you. And that's the reason why he wants to kill him in those movies. It's but good in thing that's this, all non-canon then, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, like, the characterization in this is just so much better. It's like, because yeah, when no, you talk to Broly in that, like, he is an incredibly strong character, mm. and he has all this untapped, like, power, which he does have trouble controlling. And if he loses himself, you know, it, it kind of takes over and he kind of loses all that sense of himself, mm. which is why he wears the shock collar and Paragus keeps him in line. But, like, he's a really innocent kind of character. And when you see him on screen and, you know, he's just raging and he's yelling and screaming and fighting against Goku and Vegeta, you feel sorry for him because, you know, that's that's not him. It's It's like... Mm. the 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 sweet soft spoken boy who became friends with the giant beast you know is yeah. he's kind of trapped in his own body in a way you know and he's kind of just his father kind of just pushed him and trained mm. him toward revenge you know not only his like- revenge but the revenge he believed for yeah. his son and that as well i like how um the uh, you know the way with broly's physique how he's so massive and and he's probably bigger than any other Saiyan, you know, that we've seen mm. uh, in build. And I th- and I like how they kind of explained that, you know, and it was because he was trapped on that planet, I think, and he, he didn't really have a life, so all he did was uh, train and get mm. bigger, like more, you know, hardcore, and he just probably pushed himself to the limit more. And mm. that's, that's probably why he's a lot stronger in, in a lot of ways as well, I, I like to think. I like and- the way they escalated it as well because... It's it's all handled so well in this movie. Like, mm. when Broly first fights Vegeta, because it, it kind of cuts back and forward to, you know, the fight, and then back to Frieza and Paragus, who are together watching the fight, and they kind of comment, you know, give you a bit of exposition and shit. And it cuts back to Paragus, and, you know, Vegeta's beating up Broly. He's, they're still in kind of their base forms. I think he's, Vegeta's a Super Saiyan. And he kind of says, oh, I think Broly's at his limit. I think that's it, you know? And then Broly kind of gets better. You know, he does learn as he fights. Um, he, you know, mimics a couple of moves and that Vegeta does. And again, later when he's fighting Goku. And then he goes on to say that, you know, oh, he's he's transformed. He's accessed the power of when they're a great ape. But then the big mm. kicker, like, later on. So anyway, Goku eventually takes over. He wants to go. Goku's fighting Broly in his face form and they're going to, in his base form. And they're going toe-to-toe. And then he transforms into a Super Saiyan, and they go on toe to toe again. And then he transforms into a Super Saiyan God, and he he does this technique where he kind of like summons his energy in his key or whatever, and he kind of freezes Broly in place when he's charging towards him. And Goku has this great scene where he kind of talks to him, and he says, "Because the Super Saiyan God form is not really about uh, kind of anger and brutality; it's kind of more the Zen." Super Saiyan form, so you'll probably notice that when he transform, well, when him and Vegeta transform into the red-haired version of Super Saiyan God, their builds are smaller, mm. and you'll notice that their fighting styles are more kind of defensive, kind of not so offensive. You know, when Broly's trying to attack, he kind of grabs his arm and flips him over. Like when and- Beerus was fighting Goku first, it was always defensive. He'd never even hit him, really. Mm. He just kept dodging and just waiting for the right moment. Yeah, and then he freezes him in place and he says to him, he's like, you know, he's like, we've had a lot of enemies come here, but he's like, I don't think you're one of them. He's like, I, he's like, I can just tell. He's like, I don't think you're a bad guy. He's like, you don't have to do what the others tell you to do. He's like, you don't have to fight if you don't want to. And then Broly kind of 
summons the energy and he does the same thing to Goku. He kind of learns that same technique he just used on him and freezes Goku in place. And then he absolutely pummels the fucking shit out of Goku. And I've never heard, like, Sean Shemmel scream so much, like, agonizing pain scream. Like, when Goku's getting his ass kicked, like, Broly's got him by the leg and he's doing, like, the Hulk yeah. Loki thing, like, flipping him around, smashing him into the ground. And then he grabs his face and he's, like, smashing him through, like, the ice face and shit. It's fucking intense. Yeah, it was and awesome, um, wasn't it? then uh, Goku has like a word with Piccolo. Piccolo like telepathically connects with him, and they have a word. Mm. And he's like, "Oh, he's getting so strong." And then uh, Goku transforms into uh, the Super Saiyan version of Super Saiyan God, so which is Super Saiyan Blue. This is the short version. And I don't know if you noticed this, this Patrick Brown, but you haven't really seen Super, so you probably didn't notice it when he's transforming into Super Saiyan Blue, there's a little flash of a moment where you get a look at, uh, like, a split second of Ultra Instinct, like, when his hair goes silver and the aura kind of changes to, like, a mystically kind of blue and that around him, but that's only for a split second because that's, like, a transformation he attained in Dragon Ball Super. So Ultra Instinct is, like, I think it's, like, Whis says to... I'm going off topic here, but this is really cool, so I just want to tell you... We says to Goku, he's like, you know, you're not as strong as you are because you're always thinking about your moves. So if someone attacks, you think block, you know? Mm. And he's like, "There's your nervous system can only carry thoughts so fast through your body, you know? You think to block, and then you, the thought goes into your arms, and then you, you block. He's like, there's only so fast. He's like, so you're actually slower than what you could be. He said to, to use Ultra Instinct is for your body parts to move independently and to block without even thinking about it, you mm. know, to be... And by the end of, like, the Tournament Power, Goku masters Ultra Instinct, or true Ultra Instinct, and he can pretty much defend without thinking, you know, yeah, and his, cool. hair t- his hair turns silver, and he's got, like, this fucking sick blue aura and shit and that around him. Yeah. In, in that split second while he's transforming, they give you, like, a half second yeah, to nice. a second shot of Goku, and he kind of goes a little bit Ultra Instinct, and then he oh, kind of yeah. cuts back to his power yeah, and cool. up, and he transforms into Super Saiyan Blue. Yeah. But the sickest fucking thing, which went off in the cinema, because when I went to the first screening, it was absolutely sold out. There were people fucking in there everywhere. And we went to... Uh, I went to a second screening with you, which was your first, mm. and it was still pretty sold out, even though it was in a smaller cinema and that. Yeah. And there was a scene in the movie... You know the one I'm talking about. Frieza says to Paragus, um, because when uh, Vegeta transforms into a Super Saiyan, Paragus is like, "What? what is this? And Frieza's like, "Yeah, you're saying Broly can't transform into a Super Saiyan? He missed a lot, didn't he? Like and he's that. like, what? Like the legend. He's like, that's a fairy tale. He's like, and then um, he's like, oh, that's disappointing. Broly can't transform into a Super Saiyan. So Goku's Super Saiyan Blue, and he's kicking the shit out of Broly. And then uh, Frieza has a moment... He remembers back to Goku when uh, he killed Krillin and it drove, it pushed Goku's anger to the limit and he broke through and transformed into a Super Saiyan because he became so angry. And he's like, oh, let's do a little experiment. And he turns around and he kills Paragus, shoots him through the heart, and then yells out to Broly, Broly, yeah. your father's been killed by a stray energy blast. And Broly fucking loses it and powers up and he transforms into a Super Saiyan. And there's this scene, it's in the trailer, where he's, like, down in this crater and he floats up and you see, like, the Super Saiyan hair, like, the blonde hair standing up. Crazy. And me and this guy, like, in the cinema, uh, in the first screening, like, he kind of talked to his girlfriend kind of before the movie started in the early goings. But once it got to the fighting, he kind of stopped talking. Mm. And then once we, him and I saw Broly coming out of the ground and he was a Super Saiyan, him and I, at the same time, we just went, oh, shit. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> and we looked at each other and laughed and that. And that was like, and then I obeyed you. And you're like, oh, fuck. Yeah. Like, he's like shit. screaming. He's like charging up. Yeah. yeah it was awesome. And Epic. then he even goes even further beyond that. And he transforms into a bigger form, you know, kind of with the greeny Super Saiyan hair. Yeah. It looks more like the kind of uh, the Broly we kind of know from mm. the previous movie. So I was going to talk about that. The, uh, the color of Broly is green kind of glow that he has, mm. that epic green glow. And um, yeah, does he get that? because of the the ear that he has or because i know a lot of like super saiyans usually just go yellow don't they all mm. they all go yellow but he's unique he's got this green glow he's so i don't know why his his power is just so immense 
and so untapped because mm. in the original movie, uh, they th- believe he is the the legendary Super Saiyan, like the Super Saiyan of legend that they said would always come. Oh, because yeah. in in that like, just to get across the point that he is a Super Saiyan, but he's like on a different level compared to everyone. His hair is kind of a yellowish green. Mm. and his aura is like a lighter green and yeah. hence in this movie and that as well when he transforms into a super saiyan his hair is yellow on that and he kind of has the regular kind of look but then later on he gets yeah. pushed even further and he goes he gets even bigger his muscles are immense and he gets kind of that green yellow hair yeah and it's pretty fucking sick like the the animation in this was fantastic and the fight scenes were like really well choreographed in that as well they were epic yeah they mm. were done really well would you say, honestly, that this was, like, for a Dragon Ball fan, like, this movie was everything you'd ever want in a Dragon Ball movie, and then some? Yeah. Yeah, like, definitely. The I was story was fantastic. So satisfied in the whole thing uh, overall, and, and the fights, you know, I mean, I mean, let's be honest, most, most of the reason that I watch Dragon Ball and I have since I was a kid was because it's so epic with their fights and, and the, the intensity, and it's so hardcore, you know, and it, it just feels so... I don't know. I I just love that stuff. So seeing this one and the way they pulled it off was just perfect, and and it really gave you that little boost. You kind of feel energized after watching mm. it in a way. So <laughs> that's what I really liked about it. Mm. Yeah, everything I could have hoped for with this movie, they really did a good job. Yeah, and then Goku, Vegeta goes to Goku and he's like, "Well, you can't beat him on your own, obviously." And then they try to yeah. beat him and they uh they can't do it, so they lure Broly to Freezer. And they instant transmission away. So while Freezer's fighting Broly, uh, they practice the fusion technique. Mm, and eventually, that was funny. yeah, <laughs> it was funny when they they kind of had a, a few mistakes there. They did the first try, and he turned like super fat Vegeta. And then the second try, it was like real skinny. Yeah. And then the third try, they got it perfect. They had to align their fingers mm. up just right. Yeah. So they got the yeah. like Gogeta's first intro, uh, like first official canon introduction into kind of the main Dragon Ball yeah. timeline because Gogeta only existed in, uh, what was it, movie 12. I think it was Fusion Reborn. Uh, he was in that movie and in Dragon Ball GT as well, yep. um, which isn't canon. So this is Gogeta's first, like, official interaction, and they did have that kind of in that movie, like, mm. you know, when uh, uh, the same thing happened with Gotenks, like, when they stuffed it up, they were, like, the fat version, and then oh, half right. hour later they tried again, and then there was a skinny version, and then on the third try they did it perfect, and they transformed into, like, a perfect <laughs> Gogeta. How funny. Yeah, I didn't see that. I've never seen that before, So because I've missed those kind of ones, so I mm. didn't realise they did those before. That's cool. They're still pretty good. Like, a lot yeah. of those movies are actually still pretty good watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure, for sure. And then... Uh, they go on toe to toe, and it's 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 pretty kind of neck and neck. But Gogeta's kind of pushing out in front, and then he's gonna defeat Broly finally. And uh, Chilai and Lemo they they've gathered the Dragon Balls and they've summoned the Eternal Dragon, and they wish Broly back to the planet he grew up on. Mm, and just, just as Gogeta's going to do the big fucking final Kamehameha, just in and it's time. about to kill him, and then he gets zapped away back to the planet. I was really happy with that ending. I thought yeah, that's fine, because I, 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 I want to keep Broly around. He's, I was very happy that Broly wasn't killed. Yeah, mm. and like I so say, he was still basically beat, uh, but he didn't have to die. So mm. that, that was what I really liked. It was like the ultimate top-off. It wasn't like a Marvel movie where every villain gets killed. Well, not anymore. They're kind of changing it now. But Yeah. Because, uh, you know, they're going to want to keep him. They've just created this awesome character. And that's that's what I love about this, why they kept him, you know. Because you see so many other movies that do it. They build up this great character and you're really like a villain, whatever they are. And you're really happy with it. And then they kill them at the end. And, that's mm. it. and, and you're like, why would you do that? You just created that. And then everybody loves that character so much and they have to find out an excuse to bring him back to in bring the next back. movie. Yeah, exactly. Black, Pan- Black Panther too. Yeah, so it was a smart <laughs> choice to kind of do it straight off the bat, just keep him alive. Yeah. Yeah, and, then, and now Goku visits him every... <laughs> whenever yeah, he the wants. movie ends with uh, Chile and Lemo. They go back to the planetoid and they grab food and that and they go back to... And they're going to stay with Broly because now yeah. they're being hunted. So they're like, if we stay near Broly, you know, it might be good for us because he will protect us. Mm. And then Goku instant transmissions to the planet and he brings a lot of capsules and stuff, like houses and food and water and stuff so they can live there, mm. you know, uh, very well. And he's and like... Comfortably. And I just want to come back every now and then and fight Broly. <laughs> he's like... Yeah, because training. he's like, I thought my... I thought my... After the Tournament of Power, he's like, I thought my power was 
just about reached its peak. And then this guy turned up and he's so much stronger. He's like, now I have something else to shoot toward. Yeah. It's just kind of, it's kind of selfish. Goku. <laughs> Like, I understand you're a warrior race who loves to fight, and he's a guy who loves to fight and just push himself and not necessarily be the strongest, but he just wants to see how far he can push himself, mm. you know? It's it's never, like, a a lust for power. It's more of just, like, how, how much can I better myself? How far can I actually push myself, mm. you know, keep pushing myself? And, uh, yeah, it ends with kind of a little fan service moment, um... They're like, oh, what's your name? He's like, oh, I'm Goku. He's like, but Broly? He's like, call me Kakarot. Because yeah. in the in the uh, movies, he just keeps calling him Kakarot. He just yells it out through the whole movie. He's like, Kakarot! Yeah, and he hates that name. Yeah, and it's a nice <laughs> little food. But it was kind of like a nice little moment there as well for Goku because he kind of, you know, all through Dragon Ball Z and stuff, he's always like, my name's Goku. I'm not Kakarot. My name's Goku. And it kind of like is in saying to Broly, you know, call me Kakarot. It's not only is it like a little fan service moment, but it's also kind of like Goku accepting that Saiyan part yeah. of himself, like his previous Saiyan self. Like he's never known himself. He's, he's, he's always been Goku. Yeah, exactly. But he's kind of accepting that kind of heritage and that in a way. Yeah. And this movie is kind of about, like, fathers and sons as well. Like, mm. King Vegeta and Vegeta, you know, him trying to protect his son, but also his ego about, you know, his son being the best and, you know, jealousy and stuff. And then about Bardock and Goku, about, you know, Bardock has this line where uh, Chine's talking to him and she's like, or is it Gine? I forget. And... She says, oh, you know, why Why are you so interested in helping? He's like, Saiyan men don't really, you know, take any interest in their children. He's like, what's what's the difference with you? And he's like, well, he's like, you know, he's like, I destroy so much stuff all the time. He's like, it's all I ever do. He's like, I, he's like, I kind of want to save something for once. Mm. And that's kind of his, and you're like, yeah, that's good on you, fucking Bardock. That's yeah. good reasoning in that there. Yeah. But at the same time, it's the other end of the spectrum, and it's Paragus and Broly as well. And, yeah. you know, and also King Cold and... Yeah, exactly. And uh, Freezer and, you know, not so much, but there's a little bit of that just at the beginning. Mm. But, you know, it's kind of a movie about fathers and sons and that as well. But in the end, it's a, like, for any Dragon Ball fan, it's a fucking great movie. It's, it's like, it's probably all you could ever ask for, yeah. like, in a Dragon Ball movie. It like, awesome. it, it does retcon a lot of the story in that, but I feel like it makes it a lot better than yeah. previous. Um, there's a great story at the beginning. All the animation is fantastic. The fight scenes are on another bloody level. Mm. And this is like a eight eight point seven million dollar movie. Uh, this was the budget, and it's made like almost a hundred million worldwide. Like that's yeah. a, that's obscene. It was the number one movie in America for like a week or something like that in January. Mm. Not that many movies come out in January, but. At the same time, it was the number one movie in America. Yeah. You know, it's fucking crazy. Yeah, I think as well it helps because, I mean, like I told you, I think after the cinema last time, uh, yeah, I think it, uh, for people who are, haven't even seen any Dragon Ball before, I think that if, if they just went into the cinema to sit down and watch this, you know, they'd, they'd get a real kick out of it and you don't really get too lost. It, I think it does stand on its own in a way. Um, you know, they kind of go through it pretty pretty simple but yeah it's just a really interesting story to follow and and watch and uh and the fights are just great and it's entertaining all, all through i thought so i reckon that's probably a good reason it's selling so well too i reckon it's I've got a lot of people bringing their friends you know oh check this out come with us you know? repeat or, viewings yeah like, like i went twice viewings. and i was like i kind of want to go again and watch yeah. it again um there's no way there's not going to be another dragon ball movie after this they'd have to be mm. they would have to be well that that's the success of this is great. Like it's getting really good reviews. It's it's, and that just helps with any kind of sequel. Oh yeah, so absolutely. They're, they're and it's made a lot of bank as well. Mm. Um, I was talking to my brother about it the other day and he's like, he's waiting for the next, well, it hasn't been announced, but the next kind of season or series of Dragon Ball Super. Yeah. Um, because of the first series has kind of ended. It's a hundred odd episodes and it's kind of ended, and now we've got this movie, and he's like, ah, he's like, I really hope they don't retell this movie in the next season. He's like, because mm. that'll just waste a lot of episodes and stuff, and this movie's already so good. And I'm like, 
I doubt it because with uh, Battle of Gods and Resurrection F, they never really kind of planned another series. You know, it was probably maybe when those kind of were in production, maybe in Resurrection F, they decided, hey, we're going to do another Dragon Ball series. Mm. Let's retell, like people may not have seen these movies. Let's retell in the first two sagas of this show. But I think because this movie is so critically well accepted and it's made so much money, which means it's been seen by a lot of people. I think if they do another series, they're not going to retell this. They're just going to continue on from this point but then again it might be wrong they might be like oh there may have been people who've never seen this let's just take the first 10 episodes and retell this movie Mm. in the first 10 or whatever episodes but either way like i'm game i haven't watched any dragon ball super there is a dragon ball super blu-ray collection out of like the first 50 something episodes which i'm gonna get i kind of don't want to get it because i know i'm gonna get to the end of the 50 episodes and i'll be like oh i want to watch the rest now because the tournament of power is like 40 episodes like, at the end of the season, it's obscene. Mm. Patrick Brown, did you fucking love this movie? Oh, I loved it, mate. Did you yeah, have a good it was time? Epic. Yeah. I pretty much did most of the talk, and I'm very sorry. No, you're right. <laughs> no, I really enjoyed the movie. It was great. Would you recommend Dragon Ball Super Broly? Uh, yes. yes. Do you feel oh, like yeah. um, any non-Dragon Ball fans could probably just come into this and watch it? Yeah. And kind of get, you know, not the full story, but a- enough of an understanding that they could yeah. watch this movie and go, yeah. oh, that was pretty cool. Yeah, I feel like it could easily. I'd like to go back and learn more or watch more or just continue yeah, on from anything, this. if anything, they'll watch it and they'll be like, oh, I really enjoyed this. I'll, I think I'll try and, you know, get more, more of a history and, and go back and watch older stuff. And I think it'll really help boost the fan base, I think. What would you give it out of five? Uh, I'd give it a five. Really? Yeah, solid five for me. Wow, that's mm. pretty good. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. I would definitely recommend recommend this movie. Um, I'd probably give it a four and a half out of five. Yep. Just because I think it's a great fucking movie, but I just really would have loved another f- just five or ten minutes of story just at the start. Just a little bit more on Planet Vegeta with the Saiyans mm. and stuff. Maybe a little bit more Bardock. Yeah. You know, even if it wasn't, you know, they all got called back to the planet because Freezer was planning to blow them up. Um, even if it was just like we happened to be there and it was just a, like a couple of days or a day or two with Bardock, you know, it was like overnight. He, it's not like he got back and he was there for the day yeah. and then they sent Goku off that night and then the next day it blew up. Mm. You know, even if it was just like he, he got back on a mission and he was on the planet and they were getting around and he was kind of going back to his, he's like, right, I'm off mission now. He's like, I'm just going back to my life. Here's my day to day. And then, you know, a, the next day. Mm. After a bit more exposition, a bit more story and stuff, seeing a bit more of the world and the the, yeah. uh, the people on the planet, you know, just kind of more of the day to day interaction and what's going on. And then it's like, oh, Freezer's just sent out a thing recalling everyone back to the planet. Everyone should be back, you know, this afternoon or by the end of today. Something big's going down, and then go from there. But that's yeah. like that's just like a tiny gripe. That's mm. just a tiny gripe. That's not like it. But this movie is fucking fantastic. Yeah. For any Dragon Ball fan, I totally recommend it. For any fan who's interested in Dragon Ball, fuck yeah, watch it. You yeah. could not do worse than watching this movie. It is fan fucking tastic. Yeah. No, exactly. It's awesome. Let's wrap it up. Yeah. That was great. <laughs> Why not? Eh? Thanks for coming in. Yeah. No worries, mate. No and worries. listening to me talk about Dragon Ball Super, <laughs> no, it was great. I loved it. Like I kind of want to watch it again. Like we had one screening. It was booked out. Mm. It was booked out. Like I went to book like two weeks in advance, and like three quarters of the cinema was already booked out. And I'm like, what the yeah, fuck? I was surprised to hear that. And then like I noticed they added a second screening on like the Wednesday, so we booked for that, so we could go together. Mm. And then I looked like the night before we were going to go at like the next week, and there were like two or three screenings every day for the next week. And I'm like, what the fuck? They're making bank off this. So they're like, let's add more screenings. People are coming yeah. to see it. Like, you know, because I, I saw Resurrection F at the cinema, at the same cinema, but, the, but they only had one screening on like a Sunday afternoon. And that didn't even like sell out or anything. I think it's the fact that this was like, you know, uh, we got like all the cool transformations and then in this movie. We saw the trailer. Um, it looks really great, but I think it's more the fact of Broly was introduced into like official canon mm. and, you know, they were doing something a little bit different. He looked different, but he was still similar enough. And yeah, I think that was kind of like the big draw. So mm. I, I don't know. I, I guarantee there's going to be more Dragon Ball movies, but yeah. Yeah. I don't know how they could, you know, continue on the success of this, how they could get you know, as much interest or as many people to come in for the next one. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. But I'm sure they could do it. Mm. Let's wrap it up. 
Thanks, yep. Patrick. No, no worries, mate. Let's go. Let's go out in the fucking. We'll go to the front of the house and we'll do some command as <laughs> oh, Charge it up. All those videos are like people on YouTube, like watch me turn into a Super Saiyan, and they're just like little skinny, like fourteen year olds, like ah, <laughs> fucking yelling in front of the camera with their shirts off. <laughs> really? You're like, this is just embarrassing. <laughs> Haven't you seen any of them? No, I'm no. gonna send you some. I'm gonna oh. find them all and I'm gonna send them to you. The embarrassing ones. I used to love the uh, like Snapchat filter that used to have like a Dragon Ball one, and you could like, yeah, yeah. It, 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 the effects were really cool on it, and you could just like get the Super Saiyan hair. Can was, I tell you a secret? It was awesome. I ordered a Super Saiyan wig once. Oh <laughs> yeah, but I got lost in the mail, oh, and I was yeah. a bit devo. It never turned up. I was like, oh man, could have ran around the house and been a Super Saiyan. I kind of want one now. <laughs> <laughs> you were talking about getting one to wear to the screening yeah <laughs> <laughs> well that's it let's wrap it up four out of five uh, four and a half out of five from me and five out of five from Patrick Brown yeah yep definitely. wicked uh, Dragon Ball Super Broly go watch it support it um, we want more we definitely. definitely want more I'm keen for more thanks mate no worries mate I guess we'll see everyone next week on the Beta Geeks yeah hey! Hey!